And Troy, longer term, you've been in government for a long time, you've been in politics for a long time. Um, what, what levers does the state government have in, in over this period, do you think, to make a, big, make a difference? I hate that word long term, Mark. When I <laughs> uh, came from Busselton uh, to Perth as a bright-eyed 17-year-old, went to university, they said there's a theory developed by a chap Marshall about economics that's in the long run we'll all return to equilibrium and that sounded very boring. Uh, then I learned about a guy called Keynes and he said in the long run we're all dead. So I wanted to get out of economics but anyway I stayed. Look, it's hard for the state. You know, we don't, we don't look after a lot of, um, I suppose, uh, modern mainstream uh, e economic levers like uh, you know, monetary policy. Um, to a degree, we have a capacity to spend money. Uh, you know, our infrastructure spend program is, is significant at the moment and in the context of the state, it's, it's reasonably significant but dwarfed by some of the projects uh, in, especially in the oil and gas sector. So I think one of the things uh, we do uh, as required is, uh, is you know, invest in, in construction and there's a heck of a lot of that going on around Perth. One of the big challenges for government uh, is historically you invest uh, when you've got a fair bit of money. Uh, generally you've got a fair bit of money is when the economy's hot and so you're trying to invest and build uh, in a market when probably not the best time to do it. So in the last few years our investments have I think been in almost in a counter cyclical phase which has been good. Really the role of the state in and around uh, you know, economic development is facilitating private business to take up opportunities when it presents. So that means uh, things like, and we were talking before about ports, you know, making sure our ports are well positioned to provide uh, export capacity uh, for industry as they need to, uh, to utilise that. It means we need to make sure we've got a half decent approvals process so that people can get, get stuff happening when they, they need it to happen. And I think one of the important things we're starting to focus on increasingly is making sure and uh, Nigel touched on it then, is making sure that we deliver affordability uh, in and around housing because uh, affordability in and around housing and the capacity to attract a labour supply uh, is one of those uh, critical factors to the state's long-term success. Perhaps not a major issue at the moment, but it can very quickly become a major issue. And we've been spent a lot of focus on trying to make sure we have a good, affordable base for housing. I mean, people often forget uh, from 2004, December quarter to 2006, Perth median house price went from 260 to $460,000. That's a big jump. And if that happened again, I don't know, we're probably about 500,000 now, maybe a little bit under. But if that happened again, you just won't have affordable properties. And, mm. and that's, that, that, is a, uh, that would have a significant negative impact on, uh, on the state's capacity to attract and retain labour. So I see the state's role is more of facilitation, uh, given that we, you know, we don't have those broad macroeconomic levers that, that are available to, to the Commonwealth. Well, what, what other priorities can you have? You know, like, the, 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 this, the state government has been, had a number of um, set priorities through this period, and some of them are pretty difficult to take off, like Okaji and the, the like. Where, where do you see the priorities in the longer term? When you, because you talk about affordable housing, the like, where do you see those going through if you, once we get past this election? Oh, look, we're focused on, and projects like Okaji uh, and uh, projects like James Price Point are important uh, to the state. They're very, very important uh, economic building blocks. I mean, we are a, an export-driven state. We account for nearly 50% of the nation's exports. Uh, they're only two of a number of ports which will be opening up uh, around the state, and they are fundamental to the long-term economic success of the state. So still a lot of focus on those, those projects, but other port projects as well, like Ancatel, uh, that, uh, uh, that are uh, in and moving. Uh, and I think within the metropolitan area, uh, our big focus in, you know, is, is in and around the big picture, dare I say. Mm. It's, uh, it's those projects, the stadium which will be coming on, the waterfront, uh, the city link, those transformational projects that are really trying to take Perth uh, to a position of being um, a 21st century international city. And that, you know, they're not cheap. Uh, we get criticised for borrowing money to build them. Uh, but we think that you know, if, if we don't do it now, uh, they will quite simply never happen. And I think you put the museum uh, into that as well. As we look to the election, I think beyond the election, you know, and I was talking earlier with some, some people who have just come back to Perth, and uh, one of the things they've noticed is there's a few more cars on the road, and that's a fact. Uh, and we have to deal with growing pains in our state, and congestion, uh, and issues around congestion, are significant issues that we're going to have to deal with. Public transport investment plays a role in that, but also an investment in roads and using our roads better. So. Now, I think you'll see an increased focus, irrespective uh, of, uh, of who the government is, uh, on dealing with some of those growing pain related issues, uh, congestion, 
uh, hopefully not so much housing affordability because I think with the private sector we've done a lot of work in that space. And, and Mark or Nigel, you know, looking at that, the shaping WA theme here, the priorities for WA in terms of w what we should be doing? One of the great priorities as I see it is we've got to get COAG <coughs> to bring the environmental process together. So the more you talk to Mark about the mining issues, they're very similar to the property development issues that each state can deal with the Federal Act and that would save a lot of time, make the banks a lot more comfortable, make foreign investors, they don't believe that you know, a rock or a turtle or a sun moth that comes out to breed for you know, one week or two weeks a year can hold up a development or a cocker too. And the more you also see the mining companies, they are very good environmental citizens, as is the property development. So we'd like to see that happen. And I think government now, because there is no funding federally available, is how the private sector and the international funds work together to fund infrastructure and not waste money, but put the right infrastructure in the right place. They're, I think, very crucial points. Great. And, and Mark, you got some thoughts around the <coughs> priorities of the state government? Uh, oh, I, look, I think they've been well discussed. It's around providing infrastructure. Um, you know, we talk a lot about resources. Where Western Australia has now brought itself to is a point where we would be regarded as one of the premier few resource hubs in the world, especially in, obviously, uh, oil and gas and mining. Um, and that's a unique position. And we don't often reflect on that because it leads to a number of outcomes. Uh, the first is you have to build a whole supply chain in that industry. And we are doing that, but we have to focus on doing it more because to do that, you actually need an integrated solution. I mean, that supply chain is from um, having expertise in, in accounting, in law, in front-end geology, in front-end engineering, um, in communications, um, in a deep financial market, all of whom and all of which can basically focus very much on that one area. Uh, you know, California has it in technology, they have it in, um, in uh, entertainment, and we do have it. So I often feel that we spend a lot of time asking the question, what do we do after the boom? Well, there are lots of booms that occur, and the resource boom is not a, a, a binary or a, a one-off event. It basically is a wave, and it starts with commodity prices, it's followed by investment, it continues with accelerated production, um, and then there's usually a period where you have you know, demand having come off, supply having met, and it's quieter, but it'll then happen again. And you know, as a state, what we have to do is be in this for the long term and build our infrastructure around a solution. So when there are world-class projects, when there are decisions by companies to be made, like Chevron's, uh, like BP's, like Shell's, this is their preferred location. And you know, that will actually take us a very, very long way. Um, and I don't think we are necessarily there yet. Uh, I think we've, we've made a lot of inroads in getting there, um, but I often feel we ask the wrong questions. There is no doubt there will be major projects, which we had thought six months ago, would get up, that won't get up. That, that isn't, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, what we have to make sure is that at a state and country level, things like um, affordability, productivity, uh, the activity of, of, of unions, um, all the issues that make a country and a region competitive are here and um, remain in place. And if we don't do that, there can be lots of booms, but we won't be the beneficiary. So <laughs> rather than focusing on sometimes the things you can't control, the boom, which has many independent parts, none of which you can predict and you certainly can't plan around, it is far better to focus on the things we can do as a <coughs> state and a country. And, uh, you know, what that means is we often ask the wrong question. You know, we, we need to focus on, on where our advantage lies and how we, we work around it. And, and I appreciate a number of those points you made there. Um, you, you didn't mention the investment side and, and we've got, you know, to, to keep things moving we need investment. How do you see it? You know, we've got enough, do we need to prioritise whether we're more relaxed about foreign investment or are, we, are you comfortable with those kind of things? I think we are precious about foreign investment. Um, I think we are a little precious at times. 
about movement of labour in this country. And uh, we are our own country, we're an island, we have certain issues we have to deal with. Uh, but having said that, uh, we have to open ourselves up more. I mean, it's, it's a key advantage that other countries have on Australia at the moment. You know, we don't print money as readily as other, quite frankly, uh, foreign governments. And we've seen that in the United States repeatedly. Um, we've now seen it again in China, and we've just seen it in Japan. And, you know, that will help adjust their exchange rates. And we heard, you know, Troy's commentary on what it means to the state compared to ours. So having an economy that, that has flexibility built in and adjust quickly is critical. And it, I think it'll become a greater differentiator. And if I had to you know, cast my own judgment, I'd say in the last five years in this global financial crisis post period, we've probably been a bit spoiled. You know, we've done far better than we thought we would do. We have done better than the world thought we would do. And We've run hard and we deserve the result because it's not luck. We work hard as a country, but I think it's probably meant that we haven't focused as much on some of those issues that other countries and other states and regions have simply had to because they've had no choice. Um, doesn't mean we won't. You know, we're, a, we're a very innovative and uh, creative uh, country in terms of our people, but it is something we will have to do. And Troy, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um Nigel mentioned the, the soft resources or soft mining, oil and gas, and Mark's mentioned about the, the, the boom that can go on as a, you know, we can keep tapping into it. How, we all talk about this one, the economy focused on one thing, but, you know, oil or particularly gas versus mining, are we, are we diversified enough? And well, we're as diversified as we are. I mean, it, in many ways it's the product of opportunity and investment, you know, so uh, and I think we have to remember that some of the larger, some of the larger investment decisions that have been made in WA, uh, Gorgon and Wheatstone, are in and around um, gas, uh, not so much in and around iron ore. So, you know, one way or another, uh, we are now a resources and energy-based economy. And um, I think one of the biggest policy challenges for our nation is to understand how to deal with this structural readjustment that's currently happening in the Australian economy. It's not something for state governments necessarily to have a total solution for, but it's a really big public policy issue in Australia, and that is that our economy is changing. Um, the structural adjustment towards resources and energy is happening. The, the, the factors that are driving that are beyond our control to stop. I, I don't think uh, federal policy uh, people uh, on either side of politics have really got a handle on how to deal with that. And it's difficult because how do you turn around and say to a worker at Ford, yet you've lost your job, and the reason you've lost your job is for all of those factors, and we can't think about it. And um, we're lucky, uh, we're the beneficiary uh, of that, and I, I was actually having a look at some stats around um, uh, the Western Australian population growth. You know, and if you look at December quarter uh, 2010 to December quarter 2011, the state's economy grew by 2.9%. Of that 2.9%, 1 1.7 percentage points, i.e. the big chunk of it, was made up by overseas migration into, into WA. Uh, the next biggest contributor was uh, a natural increase, our natural fertility here in the West. Uh, Intrastate migration accounted for 0.4%. So very, very limited labour mobility in Australia. And this is, a, this is a big challenge because ultimately the nation's economy can only produce so much. You, you, cut, you can grow your cake, but you can only grow it at a certain rate. And a, and a bigger portion of that is coming from, from this state. Uh, and that has huge, uh, I think, huge public policy ramifications right around the nation. So we don't really have to deal with that issue here in some ways because we, we're the beneficiary, but in a lot of other states it's a really big challenge. That and productivity uh, are two biggest issues.